how's it going everyone this is my blank welcome back to my channel where i have received a large number of requests immediately after the release of crimson 16.9.2 from people asking me to please include it into updated dx11 overhead benchmarks most of the messages that i received were along the lines of you must be fml right about now that 16.9.2 is just released and people are still reporting decreased api overhead and in general they were right about the fml part this video is again late according to my schedule. Theoretically, it was supposed to be half the work that I did on my previous video, but in reality, it ended up being more. And this was because I actually got some funky benchmark results and I decided to go back and retest some parts of it at least. And this went on for a few games, then a few configs, and I ended up doing a lot, a lot of extra tests just to make sure that the results are accurate. Since this is only AMD centric and Crimson centric, I'm using the RX480 with the same overclock as usual. I have no 300 series card to test with, so this will do since it is already an extremely popular card. I included 16.6.2 as it is the first driver to support the RX480. I'm using the same 5 games with Nvidia specific settings off. Reasons for these picks are stated in the previous video, no matter how Nvidia biased people think, and that is the keyword here, think, this lineup is, these games are still pretty neutral with, with the right settings, which I am running of course. The testing conditions are the same, 5 CPUs, configs with the clock specified here. I've still included the 1600MHz RAM option as this is interesting one to me personally, if not for all of you guys. Frame time graphs are still there, but they only show Crimson 16.6.2 and 16.9.1. Why not 16.9.2? Well, spoiler alert, because I think 16.9.1 is the best all-rounded driver at the moment. 16.6.2 is there as it is the first driver that supported the RX 480. With that being said, let's take a look at those numbers. Tomb Raider is first and we get to see 16.6.2 doing a very good job here which is peculiar since AMD had a driver that specifically raised the performance in this game only recently, but this is not necessarily picked up here in this CPU intensive area of the game. Performance is good across the board with 16.9.2 generally being the fastest when paired with at least an i5. Looking at percentage performance retention, which I'll just call PPR from now on, all drivers look good here. Small differences in percentage are not to be taken into account generally as the quantitative results, the average FPS meaning, can be better for smaller percentages in some cases. Looking at frame times on the i7, things are rather quiet at 4.6 GHz, with the occasional large spike which is present on both drivers. 16.9.1 is a tad better with less spikes and dips not as low sometimes. But moving on the slower clock type 5 all hell breaks loose and the variance is huge and we can go pack our bags and wait for DX12. Joking obviously but this area is just stupidly CPU hungry. Moving on to Witcher 3, we generally see the performance gain from switching to 16.9.1 being kept with 16.9.2. All around I think that 16.9.1 is the better showing, especially for less potent CPUs or lower frequencies. Improvements have definitely been made here from the starting driver in June. Looking at PPR however, again 16.9.1 is a tad better here as well. 16.8.3 is one of the more unreliable, if I may call it that, drivers in my tests, with a large dip with slow RAM. i7 frame times are looking good generally with the exception of the huge spike way above 40 milliseconds at the beginning of the graph. Present on both drivers, 16.9.1 did not improve in this specific situation. The occasional spikes are not, at least for me, noticeable during normal gameplay. The i5 graph looks good as well. Notice the missing huge spikes at the beginning of the test. Hyperthreading does not help that particular situation the same way a 4 core CPU like the i5 does not keep nice looking frame times at the end of the test in Hierarch Square where the CPU load is very high. In this graph however I do think that 16.9.1 has less frequent spikes. In GTA 5 we again see the very first RX 480 driver delivering the thumb number when paired with the i7. 
actually ran the bench three times with the same result each time. We do see 16.9.2 performing well on the i3 with slow ramp combo, even better than 16.9.1 which made a good jump in this department. The best result is without hyperthreading and with the latest driver. You should have realized by now that there is no driver perfect for all games and situations, just different performing ones also depending on your configuration. PPR results look good for 16.9.1 and that too, with 16.8.3 showing the worst results overall here. For GTA 5, definitely use the latest driver no matter your config. Frame times on an i7 look very similar for the first and latest driver. 16.6.2 is better in some spots like around 10-15 seconds into the test with much cleaner looking performance. These strange almost regular spikes are always present regardless of the driver. The i5 looks better here showing that GTA 5 as well is not a fan of hyperthreading. No more high and regular spikes over in this graph. Over here, except that huge spike out of nowhere, I think that 16.9.1 is looking just a tad and bit cleaner. Crisis 3 here with the best performance on 16.9.1. This is the game where I had to retest multiple times due to some strange results from 16.9.2. If you still play Crisis on a regular basis, maybe it is better to stick to 16.9.1 as it is the best performing driver in this game. Over on PPR, we see the same situation with the better performing 16.9.1 leading the pack here. It is the smoothest driver with the i3 and slow ramp combo and I've tested this a few times with good results always. For frame times on the i7, we are looking good with both drivers here, looking past some spikes with 16.9.1, it is a bit better and more grouped than 16.6.2. Switching to an i5, however, makes Crisis scream with results, frame times all over the place, there is no better looking driver here, it is all about average FPS if frame times simply cannot be helped, sadly. Fallout 4, which is extremely inconsistent as last time. Strangely, upon retesting, as I retested this game a few times as well due to strange results, it shows consistency and its inconsistency if that makes any sense. There is no clear winner here with drivers performing great in one situation only to perform badly on another configuration. Take this as you will, with PRC we cannot get a clear picture since the situation just repeats itself. With lower performing CPUs I'd stick to the latest driver 16.9.2 as it runs ok. 16.9.1 is on the other hand always struggling on the slow ramp config. Frame times on the i7 are identical on the two drivers, on the i5 slightly more variance with both drivers but again there is no winner as results are so, so inconsistent. So yeah, this wraps up my foray into AMD driver benchmarks for some time. Conclusions are that there is no such thing as a perfect driver. There are drivers that perform well in a specific game on a specific configuration. That being said, I have to recommend 16.9.1, not .2, as being the most well-balanced and well-rounded driver from at least from these uh, four drivers that I've tested. Looking beyond the most consistent performance results that I've seen in my test, this is the driver that I had the least amount of problems with, well, small issues to be honest. So thumbs up for this driver I honestly recommend it at the moment. Thank you for watching and enjoying this video, I want to see your comments down below as usual and thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing. See you next time everybody, bye bye.